G'day everyone, I've got a Samsung 970 Evo Plus SSD in for data recovery. Let's have a look and find out what's wrong with it. So here's our first error we get when we try to boot up this SSD. We get PCI X4, Samsung SSD 970 Evo Plus 1 terabyte. And it says, warning. Please back up your data and replace your hard disk drive. A failure may be sorry, a failure may be imminent and cause unpredictable fail. Press F1 to run setup. So we're not going to go into the BIOS because that's not going to offer it, us anything for data recovery. So I'm just going to run a quick test to see what's happened with it. You can see here we've got it IDing with the correct ID, one terabyte, but we got a smart failure. So Let's have a quick look. So the SSD is readable, that's good news. But we see we've got about 1.5 million errors logged. So that's not a good thing. So let's create a task and see if we can read the data on this drive. Okay, so we're gonna open up this SSD and the good news is we are accessing the data on it. We've got a Windows NTFS system. Uh, because there is problems with this SSD, I'm just gonna test the master file table from the NTFS system. So at the moment we're just making sure that the whole NTFS master file table is readable because this is going to be where the files and folders are. This one's quite large. This user has a lot of data, a lot of files. It is reading fairly slowly. That is a bit unusual. So we'll give that some time to load up and we'll come back in a, in a minute. Beautiful, here we go, we found the NTFS. So we can load this up and we've got quite a lot of data. So what we'll need to do is build a map of the important data that the customer wants and we will start the imaging process. Okay, good, now I've got a map and it's running and all the green rectangles is all the files that it's reading. So I shall let this run uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to run into some errors along the way. It's a lot of data and the SSD does have some problems. But this will be a good recovery for this Samsung Evo. Now that we got all the data back, I thought we'd have a look at the technology on this SSD. Um, the VNAN is Samsung's branding for the what others call 3D NAN, so that's the vertical NANs where they layer the cells. And I'm pretty sure the Evo Plus is the more cheaper version. Pretty sure it's the three memory cells, um, multi multi layer cell version of the NAN. So let's let's take this label off and let's have a look what's under it. First thing I'm going to do is probe all the capacitors and get all their uh, ground points and I'll show you that on the screen now. So this is the little schematic I've made to help me diagnose these SSDs in the future whenever they come in. So for me to get the ground, I've made a little ground symbol. If you have a look here, it's just a little black rectangle and you can see I've lined up the ground side of all these capacitors. Up here, all along here, ground side, ground, 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 down here, ground, ground side. So that's just going to help me identify the ground and the voltage inside when I'm diagnosing these in the future. Now another thing you can look at is this has got a CPU, the S4LV003, it's on the 970, but I think I've also seen it on the 980. And it is a 32-bit ARM Cortex-R5, um, PCIe 4, NVMe 1.3 version C, I think. Uh, 8 nanometers, and there's a little bit about the chip. It's also known as a Elpis. If you have a look here, it says Elpis at the bottom. So the Samsung CPUs have got all these different factory code names. 
It's a bit hard to see, but you can just make it out here, E-L-P-I-S, in the picture. This, I'm just going to reverse engineer a little bit of the power management system, which is very simple. 3.3 uh, volts comes in, hits the E fuse, comes out, comes over to this PMIC, the power management chip, where it distributes all the necessary uh, voltages for all the different components, like the CPU and the NAND chips. And we've got two regulators, a 1.2 volt regulator and a 1.8 volt regulator. So now that I know all that, it's going to be very handy in the future. I'd also be able to be nice to ever um, reverse engineer these diagnostic pinouts. Not sure what we got here. Maybe JTAG, UARTs, hidden Samsung thing. So if you know what that is, that'd be awesome. Uh, especially if you're pretty good at reverse engineering um, Cortex CPUs. So I'll probably do that in the future. Um, so now it's just a case of me showing you a little bit more details of me probing each of these chips and I might explain a little bit more information on what's happening. So the first thing I'm going to probe for voltage is the E-fuse, the electronic fuse. And this is a marked with AT, CV1 I think it says. Most of these Samsung ones are marked like this, AT at the start at least, and this is the pin one side here. So this is the voltage input side, which means that the voltage output side is the other side. So if we come in here and probe it, we should, with my setup, see a 3.3 volts for the input side. So I'm just going to grab the first pin on this side, and there you go, we've got 3.3 volts going in. So if we go to the opposite side of it, this is obviously a working one and I'm just doing some reverse engineering for the future. If I probe it, we should get the 3.3 volts coming out. And we do. So these top, all these top three pins are the same. If you look at the data sheet, now it looks like the 3.3 volts goes into this capacitor here, and it does. We've got 3.3 volts. My um, might just push that, yep. Exactly runs into that capacitor. Now while we're in the area, I might just check something else, this capacitor here. We remember that we've already marked out the ground side, so let's have a look what this voltage is, and it's 1.8. I know you can't see my meter, but that side is 1.8 volts. Now the next one we're gonna test is this little eight pin load switch. It's marked 13XH, and its job is used to control the flow of current to a load. So let's look at it. This is pin one and it's the voltage inside. We've got 1.2 volts on the input and directly opposite is the voltage output. And we've got the same, 1.2 volts. That should also be part of it here, 1.2. That's all part of it, 1.2 on these capacitors. And what have we got on the other side? 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 volts. Now we're gonna move down to this little chip here and it's labeled RB966 and it's a dual channel load switch. So let's measure two voltages. To measure this, we've got a PMIC. I believe that's a PMIC, correct me if I'm wrong. And if we follow it down to the dual panels, we've got pin one here. So that would be voltage one in, and then this side is voltage two in, which means voltage one out, voltage two out. And we can see it coming from the PMIC. We got 1.8 volts coming in out of this capacitor. And then if we follow it down to our voltage one in, we have 1.8 volts on this side. And the voltage out is, of course, 1.8 volts. So what's the second voltage? It looks like it's the same to me. It's all part of the one rail there, so that will be 1.8. And we've got 1.8 on the multimeter and 1.8 volts coming out the second voltage. 
Now we're just left with our NAND chips. So if we probe the voltage side of this capacitor here, we've got 2.5 volts. So these must be supplied by 2.5 volts for the NAND VCC and the NAND memory core VCCQ. What do we got here? We've got 1.2 volts there, 2.5. Um, down this side here, again 2.5, this little one in here, 1.8, 1.2, 2.5, so there's your different voltages and I'll put them on our little schematic and you can use them if you need them in the future, hopefully it helps you out a bit. Well that wraps up this video, I'll see you guys on the next one.